Hi guys, welcome to The Gun Shop with me, John. Today, we're gonna to be having a little chat about balance. Balance, unsurprisingly, is how a shotgun balances or how a gun balances overall. And the balance of a shotgun will affect how it shoots, how it handles, and generally how it performs. More to the point, how you need to shoot it. We're gonna start by showing you where a balance point perhaps should be, and talk a little bit about the history of balance. I suppose the history of balance starts with a guy called Goff Thomas, uh, who was an amazing gun writer and journalist. He theorized, from, I think, two or three theories on gun balance, uh, generally based upon a distance from the trigger forward. I think coming into a more modern time, people now realize that gun balance is more personal. It also has a lot to do with the size, the shape, the fit, and the targets you're shooting at. This little Mark 38, for example, has what we would call a perfectly neutral balance balanced over the hinge pin. That, in my opinion, is probably the best all-round balance point. However, there is advantages and disadvantages to having frontward heavy or rear heavy guns. I'm going to get a whiteboard out for that. Let's go. So here we have a shotgun. It's beautiful, I know, engraved and jacketed. This line here is representative of our middle line, our hinge pin balance, a perfectly neutral balance. As I've said, a perfectly neutrally balanced gun will be the most versatile of all of them and be the easiest to use, generally speaking. Not to upset anything. However, there is advantages and disadvantages to a longer, or I say a long barrel, a front heavy gun or a rear heavy gun. And then we'll talk a little bit about how you attain front heavy or rear heaviness. Um, so, this being the long barrel side, a positive is that a long barrel no, so we're not talking about barrel length here. It's really hard to not mix them up because generally a longer barrel will give you a more front heavy gun because not many companies stick a different stock on with different balances in for a different gun. A front heavy gun is more calculated. The fact it's more calculated comes from that extra weight. It means you have to use that much more power to get the gun movement and and as such, it kind of controls itself a little bit more, but you have to be so much more purposeful with it. And those two things combine together to be a much more calculated shot. You try and throw a front heavy gun around like you would a rear heavy one, it just doesn't work. It is slower. It really will lend itself to more of a minimal gun movement style of shooting. So maintain lead or pull away much more than pull through. Generally speaking, generally speaking, I'm going to start saying generally speaking, just assume that I'm generally speaking. A front heavy gun will be slower. Again, that front end weight means that most of your left hand speed comes from your left hand and your body movement. There's a lot less rotatability. If you hold a gun in between your hands and feel it, you'll feel when one hand is working harder than the other, even without putting it over your finger to balance it or on a proper balancing jig. So, talking a couple of points about a rear heavy gun, a rearward balanced gun. They are more instinctive. The fact that a rear heavy gun will rotate that much faster around its axis will mean that you can get that gun on target that much quicker. And for somebody who shoots instinctively or needs to take a snap shooting type of shot, a snap shot, a rearward heavy gun will lend itself to that. You can just get those barrels to where you need them that much quicker. There is a downside to this that could be called erratic. Excuse my spelling there. Um, because you lack the calculation for the opposite reasons to why you want weight out front is that the gun has no movement of its own accord. There is no smoothness there. And as such, unless you are a very, very good gun controller, have a lot of gun control, trying to shoot a short barrel in a methods that would suit a longer, heavier front heavy gun, as opposed to a rear heavy gun, sorry, not short barrel, more, will be important. I should stop talking about barrel length here, although I've said that the actual barrel weight is probably more important. So we're gonna say a front heavy gun can be a short barreled gun. There you go, I'm gonna leave that one there. Going back over to a front heavy gun. Um, fashionable. Currently, because of the way the trend of shotguns and the way they're going, 
currently the front heavy gun is more fashionable than a rearward heavy gun. People generally come into shooting through clay shooting and the Baskin CPSA method teach more of a calculated style of shooting more of than a natural short gun movement style of shooting. So different schools of teaching and different schools of shooting will require somewhere either side of this line. So I'm going to stop here, I could carry on for a little bit and I think the real answer is you can go and find this out very easily yourself. Go get a broom from the cupboard or a mop, preferably not too wet, and if you mount that mop like a gun with the mop end out front or the broom end out front and try and swing it, it will feel very different if you rotate it round and swing it the other way. The speed and the versatility changes massively and as such there is no right or wrong answer, hence in the middle is the perfect option obviously. But there is no right or wrong answer here and each shot can certainly require a different gun. Unfortunately the option to have a loader carrying six guns for you that will hand you the right one at the right moment is unrealistic for the most of us. So that is that. If you can then with that broom on mop pull the head off and feel it more naturally but or perhaps even gaffer tape the middle of the broom to the middle of the gun you will then feel a mid-weight gun, a gun balanced through the middle and you'll understand that actually it is the, the ultimate thing. Where the weight is in the gun can make a huge difference. So you can have some guns that are technically very well balanced that still feel like uh, bags of potatoes. Uh, as you can have front heavy guns that feel amazing, like stupidly front heavy guns that feel amazing and amazingly rear heavy ones that feel amazing because of the way that the weight is placed. Generally speaking, the consensus is regardless of which side this falls, you want the weight to fall between the shooter's hands, which is here and here. And as such, any extreme weight on either end can just upset, it's almost make it a touch unwieldy in either direction, even if it is technically very well balanced. Just a thought. All right, uh, how to get it either side of this, um, or why a gun would be either side of this? Well, we're gonna go with a real simple one, uh, multi-chokes. Uh, a multi-choke adds weight to the front of a gun unless it is done aftermarket or done in a slimline, very professional fashion. Most barrels are swelled to take chokes to make them stronger and probably, to be honest, easier to manufacture. And as such, having a multi-choke over a fixed choke, generally speaking, will add weight that way. Uh, the same can be said for a, a fixed choke can bring the weight back, but generally speaking, because of the construction of guns, most guns are made to be slightly front heavy with a multi-choke, so with a fixed choke variant, a lighter weight barrel, you'll end up bringing the weight back over the centre, because you're losing two, to two ounces out the front, generally speaking. Okay, um, barrel length. Barrels long. Short barrels. And that can go with light barrels. And heavy barrels, as we've said. Weigh your barrels. Go and weigh six 30 inch barrels of various choking various brands, and you'll realize that a 30 inch barrel can generally mean absolutely nothing. You can shoot 28 inch barrels, and in fact, to that point, we're going to delete the barrel length because barrel length is of no issue. The barrel weight is the overriding factor here, and that can again relate back to the choking that's in it, the boring that's in it, the construction of it, the ribs that are on it, so on and so on and so forth. Okay, um, adjustable comb. Obviously a really good way is to put a load of technology in here that weighs two ounces, three ounces, four ounces, um, and that's gonna drive your weight backwards. It's quite simple, isn't it? And as such, most modern multi-choke sporters, if you buy them in an adjustable comb, will just outhandle the non-adjustable comb versions, generally speaking. Uh, uh, sort of across the board. Wood grade. Uh, Muruku are probably the best ones to look at for this because they are almost identical from a grade five to a grade one in dimension and spec. Go grab a Mark 60 grade 1, go grab a Mark 60 grade 5, feel the difference. Different wood qualities are of different densities. It's amazing that how actually a bit of wood either side can make a massive amount of difference. Obviously this can throw balances that way or that way depending on the piece of wood that is on there. So for example if you get two, let's say Caesar Garini Magnuses, one is of a dark dense wood and one is of a light beautiful wood with high contrast, both beautiful they could be like 100 grams different in different places and that will drive your balance out. 
And the obvious one, I suppose, rebalancing. Um, the insertion of weight here or here. A lot of high end sporters now, or sort of let's say top of the middle end sporters now, will come with balancing weights. So you can really customize that gun for yourself. If you want a more of a trappy gun, you'll take the weights out the back. If you want something a little bit faster, you'll take the weights out the front. And you can really have a play and you can keep your gun a bit more on point if you like. A gunsmith can also add weight to the front and back, remove weight from the back, or add weight to the back and the front, and there's a lot of things that you can do there. Rebalancing will obviously change the balance. That's why it's called rebalancing. So, thank you very much for watching. Um, I think you'll agree that there's some good points here. It is a horses for courses thing. A, for an upland walked up shooting gun, a short, rear heavy gun is preferable. As a high pheasant gun, a front heavy gun is preferable. For a skeet gun, slightly back from middle is preferable. For a trap gun, slightly forward of middle of uh, hinge is preferable. When we say forward heavy, you know, Generally speaking, we're talking within probably an uh, inch and a half. And if we're talking rearward heavy, generally speaking, you're talking no more than three quarters of an inch rearward. And within those parameters, a gun can still feel really, really nice. And that's probably worth bearing in mind, but this isn't the be all and end all. The real extremes I would personally probably avoid. Although, that said, there are some guns that are so unbelievably front heavy that you almost, they feel like nothing else. Brandon Synergy is case in point there. All right, that is enough from me. I'm starting to go on a little bit. Thank you very much for watching once again. Take care. If you've got any questions, chuck them below and we'll endeavor to answer them. And we'll see you next time.